Thanks for joining us for another fun experiment here with Playing With Rain. Uh, now today's experiment is going to be a pretty simple one, which is kind of the goal with this. I like to keep these as simple as we can while still teaching some very uh, important scientific uh, phenomenons. And so this one today that we want to focus on uh, is really, really basic as far as what you need for uh, materials to use it. You need a couple of balloons, uh, so you can just buy really any type of uh, inflatable balloons at the store. I have a yellow one and a blue one here. We're going to use two because one we're going to fill with just air. The other one of these we're going to fill with some water and then we're going to see what happens when we put a flame to that balloon. Now you might guess what's going to happen. The balloon will likely pop and in one of those cases it will. In the other case it actually won't pop and I'm going to explain some of that uh, here in a little bit as well. So simply uh, I also have just a little bit of water, a, a glass of water here and then a plate just in case we have a mess to kind of uh, create. We don't want that to get all over the table. So we're going to use that. And then a lighter that again, you can get at the store pretty cheaply if you don't have one already at the home. You can also use a candle uh, for this part. I just chose to use this lighter because I didn't actually have a candle on hand here at the house. Uh, but if you do, you can light the candle with the lighter and that makes it a little bit easier uh, for this balloon experiment. So what we're basically doing is we're going to create a flame resistant balloon. So first of all, we're going to air up this yellow balloon that indicates just the regular balloon aired up uh, with some air. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that here. You don't have to add a whole lot of air. I mean, if you want to make it really big and fun, that's great. I know my little girls love it. The bigger the balloon, the better for them. But uh, for this, I'm just going to make it pretty small and simple. Uh, but you can see, simple balloon. It is aired up. And we are going to... Um, now, because this is the part where we have a balloon that's likely going to pop. So I am going to put on some safety glasses and you do want adult supervision uh, for this. In fact, I would say it's required for this experiment. So I'm going to go ahead and pop on these safety goggles. You could put a candle on the plate here and light it with the lighter and then it just kind of frees up one hand where you can actually have both hands here. But I'm just going to go ahead and hold the lighter in place. And what do we all think is going to happen? It doesn't, I can have it down there a little ways below, but as I raise this up a little bit higher, and the flame doesn't even. <laughs> it scared me a little bit there. The flame doesn't even have to actually touch the bottom of the balloon for it to pop. That, that latex of these balloons is just so thin that as soon as that heat starts to get soft, it starts to soften up with the uh, heat from the flame there, it does eventually burst because of the pressure inside of that balloon. So now, uh, that's pretty simple. Most of you probably guessed that that was going to be the case, that that balloon was going to pop when you put that heat to it with the flame underneath it. But now what I want to show you is what's going to happen when we put some water into this balloon and we do the same thing and put that flame underneath it. First, I'm going to pour a little bit of the water in here. So this is, again, the biggest difference. This is what's going to make that balloon uh, fire resistant when we put the flame underneath it. So I'm going to pour this water in. Again, you want to be as careful as you can so you don't make a mess, but that's why I do have the plate underneath there just in case so you don't get it on your countertop. Um, I can go a little bit more. I felt like it was full. There we go. And it did fill all the way up, so I had a little bit spill out there. And I'm going to actually get a little bit of that to come out just so there's enough room to then start blowing it up. So now We've got some water in there. Okay. And I think I actually let that get a little bit bigger than the yellow one I did before. So I might just let a little bit out so that we're keeping our uh, variables as equal as possible in this experiment. And then tie that off. And it's you can't probably see it in the video, but if I look underneath here pretty closely, there's just a little, little tiny puddle of water down inside of that balloon at the very base of the balloon. And that's going to make all the difference here when we light, when we put that fire underneath it. So let's go ahead and see what happens again. Going to put the lighter here and I'm going to drop the balloon down close to where that's at. See how much closer I can get without anything happening. And actually, if you're brave like me, you can put that flame right on the balloon and it's not even gonna pop. It's not even gonna pop. So that's pretty cool. It doesn't pop. I thought this would still pop. I was actually pretty amazed with this experiment. 
Uh, but notice if I turn this a little bit and you can see that that did create kind of some black soot on the balloon right there. And what that is, is this balloon is actually still perfectly fine. It didn't damage the balloon. Um, the water protected the balloon. That's actually some uh, carbon that was deposited from the flame. We, when fire burns, it burns oxygen and it actually creates and produces CO2 or carbon dioxide. And so this is actually some of that carbon that's been deposited from the flame onto the balloon, but it's really actually not burnt. The balloon itself is fine. In fact, I'm gonna use my hand, it might get a little bit messy here. But if I use my finger and get it a little bit wet in that water I spilt, it doesn't come off perfectly. Um, if I got a paper towel, you could actually rub that off. And that would mostly, for the most part, come off and you'd have a balloon that looks perfectly fine. And then we can kind of repeat the experiments though. I'm gonna show this one more time. Um, Well, so there you go, failure number one. Um, so it doesn't always work, and just like all experiments, <laughs> there's one for the blooper reel right there, but um, just like all experiments, you have variables. And with this one, uh, I honestly, I tried this one. I even went out in the garage where I wasn't around my electronics uh, when I first went out to do this, and I held it there for a good 30 seconds to a minute to see if it would pop with the water in there, and it would not pop and this time it popped. So a uh, perfect scenario of what happens. Uh, science experiments, you can have the same materials, you can do it the same way, and nine times out of 10, it does the same result, and then sometimes it doesn't, and it pops on you. So that's what happened there. Um, but in theory, what we saw in the very first time is that water does act as more of a, um, a barrier to letting that balloon pop. And the reason for that is, and I'm gonna, now that my balloon has exploded, I can take my goggles off there and explain the rest of this for you. Um, but really what happens is water has a very high heat capacity. And what that means is it takes water, uh, it, it can absorb a lot of heat compared to the air or the land, the dirt, the rocks around. Um, those absorb heat a lot faster and they actually will heat up quicker. But for water, it can absorb just a lot of heat, a lot of energy before it starts to radiate that heat back out. And so with the balloon, when it had that water down at the base of it and the flame, the water was heating up inside the balloon. And then as it heated up, heat rises and cold air sinks. And so that hot water was then rising to the top of the puddle and cooler air was, mo or cooler water was moving down to replace uh, that warmer water. And that cycle, it's kind of a feedback cycle that kept continuing to happen. And as that happened, it continued to keep the balloon protected from popping. Now, as we saw in my failure there, if you want to call it at the second round of it, um, the water eventually got hot enough. I had a real small puddle in there. If I would have had more water in that balloon, I could have held the flame a lot longer. And it really takes until that water gets hot enough that that water basically gets to the boiling point and starts melting uh, the latex of the balloon, then it will still pop. So yes, fire resistant, for a little while, but again, it doesn't last forever, and eventually that water will get hot enough that it'll pop the balloon. Uh, but I like that experiment because it's just simple enough that it does explain, though, uh, kind of the weather, the daily weather. You know, you go outside, and if you live in an area that you're pretty far from any major um, lakes, large lakes, or um, oceans for that matter, then you notice during the day it heats up very quickly. Uh, we live in uh, in Idaho where it's drier, there's not a whole lot of water around to keep that temperature moderated. Uh, but if you live by the coastline, the temperatures don't fluctuate quite as much on a typical day. You know, in the morning it might be in the 60s and by the afternoon it might be in the 70s for the most part. Whereas where we live here, it can be in the 60s in the morning in the 90s, close to 100 on a summer day in the afternoon. Just because there's not that temperature, that water capacity to control um, the temperature quite as much. So this kind of helps explain that as well and how water just has such a high heat capacity. Uh, but I hope this was fun for all of you and that you learned something from it. I know I definitely learned something from it and I'm gonna try this again, see if I can learn some more about how I can make that balloon last a little longer next time. Uh, but if you did like this, uh, if you wanna see more of these, uh, please feel free to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the little bell there too. That way you won't miss anything uh, when we do have our next experiment pop up here. And we love doing these. Thanks again for joining us and we will see you next time.